Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi! Hi! Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Today we're talking with Amanda Baker, who played Jolene on Night Shift. It makes me want to go and watch the second season again. I know she's not on it, but talking about all of the happenings on the first right. season, when I want to go do the second one now, especially because Jagger's on and we just talked about Karen and Jagger, yum. Yep. And if you haven't watched Night Shift, it's actually what we watched while General Hospital was out of episodes. Yes. So you can go back to our summer episodes and listen to our weekly recap, which was the different seasons, or the different discs, different discs of Night Shift, season one. Right. And so that's where Jolene was, and she was fun. I was glad that she was as shocked by the turn that her character took as we were. Yes. That was cute to hear her say, yeah, it wasn't the girl next door, yeah? We really shouldn't give away everything that the upcoming interview is about. I'm not giving away everything. Okay. But it was fun. It was, it was fun to learn about her journey and what she's been doing since General Hospital and what she has coming up in the works. So we hope you enjoy learning more about Amanda. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. You can hear us and see us okay and everything? Yes, yes, I can. I'm gonna straighten myself up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shannon. I'm Amanda. Oh, well, easy to remember, for sure. <laughs> Thanks so are for you and your daughter? Oh, of course. Are you and your daughter feeling better? I know you weren't. Yes. Oh, time. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, just one of those, like, crazy, like, you know, just congestion and, you know, just the whole works. And, and you know, she's almost two, so, and she's oh. teaching, too, so, oh. she, like, you know, gets amplified, like, one on, one thing on top of the other. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you for understanding. It's, we're definitely oh. feeling better. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Yes. I have two kids. Amanda has four been yeah. there. Oh. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. When, and then I've got a son, uh, fortunately he stayed well through the whole thing, but he was having to do virtual learning, you know, because somebody at his school possibly was, was, it, was in contact with somebody with COVID. So it was just like 8,000 things like happening. So, um, yeah, so it's, you know how it is, just crazy times right now. <laughs> How old's your son? He's six, so he's in okay. first grade, yeah. Well, so, how's yeah. he handling that? You know, I was, I was nervous at first in the beginning of the year because I wasn't sure if he was, not necessarily about COVID per se, like him contracting it, because I mean, I, I'm nervous about that, but also just with him with the mask, you know, not knowing if he was going to be messing with it, and like it would, he was just, it was going to be a big issue, but I think kids are pretty resilient. So he's, he really hasn't had an issue with it. I think he's pretty used to it now. So he has to remind me in the mornings, like, mom, uh, where's my mask? You know, cause I'll just walk right out the door and I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, so he, you know, he reminds me, but yeah, he's doing good. You know, it, aside from just the never knowing like day to day, it's like, are we going to get a notice that he has to be home today because of, you know, um, somebody poss possibly being exposed. Um, but other than that, like he's, he's the type of kid that enjoys being at school and just loves everything, you know, just being there with the teacher and, and the other students. So as long as they're open, that is where he will be, yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, he's doing well. He's doing good. And where do you live? I'm in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. I was there up until the day it got declared a pandemic. I oh, was down wow. there. I was in Nashville from March 6th to the 11th on our way home is when we just slowly started watching yeah. everything shut down. We're like, yeah, what are we going yeah. home to? That was basically when we got the notice that, you know, school was closed and they mm -hmm. never went back like the rest of the year. So it was crazy. Yeah, we're here in Nashville and um, where we are right now is not super strict. I mean, pretty much things have opened back up and we're just kind of taking it, you know, just day by day, week by week, just to see, you know, how it goes. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's back to normal, but it's definitely, you know, opened up more in a sense. So when you guys had just had those huge hurt or, um, tornadoes right before 
Yes. All this too. I actually just totally forgot about that until. Yeah. That we had. Yeah. And my poor friend, Erica, who actually I met in New York city when I was there, she moved to Nashville not too long before that. And so I was like, I'm so sorry you moved to Nashville and you get tornadoes and then a pandemic and it's all (laughs) these things happening like at once. So I have not seen her since. Oh gosh, was it March or April? Maybe. Yeah, it's been since then, and oh. um, I keep inviting her over, but she, you know, it's it's like everybody's just being wary of it, and so you know, you have to everybody you have to re- respect everybody's kind of where they're at. So, um, so yeah, so my son keeps asking like, "When's Aunt Erica?" He calls her Aunt Erica. When's she coming over? I miss her. I'm like, "Don't worry, buddy. It'll be soon." So yeah, it's it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Well, it's nice to hear that, you know, you at least eventually will have her yes. nearby and able definitely. to see her very quickly. Yeah, yeah. definitely, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but so, like, we just like to get to know the actors, actresses a little bit more. Actually, during the whole shutdown, when they actually stopped having new episodes of General Hospital, was the first time we watched Night Shift. Oh, wow. Night Shift was on SoapNet. Yeah. And I didn't have SoapNet when... It was on because it was a paid channel. So, oh, wow. oh, yes, that's right. So, so thank you, YouTube. We were able to watch nice. all of Night Shift. Great. The, the, first, the first season. season. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been a while since I've gone back and watched any of it. So, uh, I but I just did um, Steve and Bradford's podcast the other day. So we, we, we reminisced about some stuff, which brought my memory back to, all of our memories back to, you know, like some, some things, you know, so, so yeah, it was fun times for sure. So how did you wind up on the show? Well, um, I, so back, backing up, um, after, uh, I started in the Southeast acting in the Southeast. I'm from South Carolina and I, uh, you know, just did kind of some smaller projects there, um, things that were happening in Wilmington and whatnot. And, um, and once I kind of got enough on my resume, I decided that it was, a, it'd be a good idea to, uh, I moved to New Orleans for about six months and, uh, we had my agency, my agent had formed some relationships with some casting directors there. And so I moved to New Orleans for about six months. At that point, I realized, okay, if I'm going to actually pursue this as a career, I need to actually either go to LA or New York or somewhere, you know, a bigger market. And it, I think for me, it probably worked out best for it to kind of happen slowly like that, because if I had just moved out to LA right away without really having anything under my belt and really knowing anybody as far as representation and stuff, I think I probably would have gotten scared and turn, you know, turn around and come right back home just because I was such like a homebody and just, you know, I never pictured myself moving to a big city to, to pursue acting. So it kind of happened slowly for me, which was, I think, beneficial. So I got out to LA, uh, it was January of 2006, and it was just that very next year. I actually took a casting director, or I, I took a workshop with Mark Teschner, who's the casting director for General Hospital. It was in that workshop that I um, just got to really get to know him and show show off what I was able to do as far as my acting skills. And so he started bringing me in for auditions. And so when whenever people ask me, you know, what's your advice as far as, you know, how to, how to get started and stuff, I, I'm always a big proponent of if you can take an acting director workshop or or something like that where you can get in front of someone, that that's a lot of times how they get to see people, you know, act and see, see their abilities. So anyway, um, he started bringing me in for auditions. So I I believe it was probably my third audition I had with him. It was for this, it was general hospital night shift. And I'm like, what's this? You know, I mean, I, I know general hospital, but I don't know what this night shift is, you know, come to find out it was this new thing they were doing where they were going to do like a third, they were going to shoot it like a series, you know, a 13 episode series, but they were going to air it on, on soap net. And, um, and so, yeah, so I, I just remember going in, I think I had three or four auditions for that, just waiting. I think I waited a week to hear back, um, you know, and when I finally got the phone call, it was like, oh my gosh, like I, you know, it was just one of those phone calls. It's like, okay, this is, this is everything. I mean, I was, I was super, super excited. So, so yeah, that was kind of the background into how it all started. That's awesome. And I, I like that tip that, cause I'm a big fan of 
education and yeah, you know, always be learning, always taking some kind of oh yeah, something nerdy. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's so many things. Well, I should say I don't know about now, but I mean there there are there there are so many uh, you know classes and workshops and things out there that not only can get you exposed to people, but also just keep you sharp you know, and, um, just keep you learning because it's, it's a never ending process, you know? So, um, yeah, some, some always a big proponent of that. And Mark does such an amazing job in his workshops because he's just, he's been doing it for so long. It's just whether, whether you get cast on the show or not, it's beneficial to take either way. So, so yeah. So did you know what role you were auditioning for or was it just well, um, the first like couple auditions I went in for, uh, you know, they, they, they gave me her name. They, they told me she was a nurse. Her name was Jolene. And, um, the part of the script that they gave me was very general, you know, it's like, just, just, I had no idea like what Jolene was all about really. Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't until the final audition I went in and I read through it. Like I had been doing the last two and, they said, okay, now we want you to read it um, like you're a murderer. And I was like, <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So that was, that was my first inclination that something wasn't right with her. Um, although it was the same lines I'd been doing the entire time. Mm -hmm. I had to really like flip everything that I had done in the last couple auditions and uh, read it like she was an evil person. So I was like, not necessarily evil, but like, you know, she, that she was, she, there was something going on, you know? So, um, I was like, what does this mean? Like I walked out of there and I'm thinking, and that's all they said, you know? So I had no idea what was to come, but when I got cast in the role, I, I was, I, I was very interested to see what was going to be happening with this character, Jolene, because she was, she wasn't the girl next door that we all thought she was going to be. <laughs> no. Cause I don't know about you. Like at the beginning, you kind of had a feeling. And then you're like, oh no, that couldn't be. And then, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you did a great job. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We didn't get all the scripts ahead of time. So, you know, week by week as we would get the scripts, like I would, I'd be reading it going, oh, this is terrible, you know, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun because I'd never really played a character like that before. So it was fun to kind of, um, you know, delve into that side and um, just really you know, see just how bad she could be. So yeah, it was, it was fun. We had, we had a really good time. I mean, it didn't last as long because then you wound up not even being in the second season. I wasn't in the second season uh, because I got cast on All My Children and I actually got cast on the show while we were still filming the last couple episodes of Night Shift. And they, they weren't sure exactly what direction they were going to go in with the second season and, and what they were going to, do to try to keep it fresh, you know, kind of, you know, because it was such a new thing they were doing. Um, so yeah, so I, I wasn't able to be on the second season, but, um, but yeah, I had moved on to another, another project, but yeah, so I haven't had a chance to actually even watch the second season, so bad to say, but, um, <laughs> but so yeah. We've only watched the first season though, because okay. that's all that, COVID allowed us to during, and then they came back and so yeah. we haven't watched it. But yeah. then when we were talking about talking to you, we both said, okay, we have to watch the second season because we need right. to know. And what the first two episodes were. Yeah. She's not even no. gonna, so we're not even going <laughs> to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're right there with you. Don't worry. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, they were trying to, trying to go in a different direction in the sense of like getting some newer actors on and just a different kind of storyline, you know, just things like that. So um, it was cool that they actually decided to do something like that because they've never, you know, a, a soap had really never done anything like that before. You know, it was it was really cool to see that they were actually, they, they were able to do it for two seasons, you know, which was, which is a lot more than a lot, I think a lot of people expected, you know. Right. Had you watched General Hospital before that? I had watched, um, I had watched some, but I grew up watching, um, my grandmother watched Days of Our Lives and my mom watched Young and the Restless and Bold and Beautiful. So all the soaps I were on, I didn't watch. <laughs> so I had to kind of get a refresher. Of course, I knew a lot of the major characters, you know, right. um, and had kind of gotten bits and pieces and stuff like that, like throughout the years. 
So I wasn't completely unaware of, of what was going on, but, um, but I definitely did some research and, you know, kind of read up on things that were happening and especially with the characters I was kind of going to be interacting with and stuff like that. So, um, but the good part about it was that night shift was sort of like this side thing happening. So there were completely different storylines. They were just kind of a, a, a side sidestep as to right. what was going on at the hospital. So it was nice in a sense that we didn't have to be super intertwined with what was going on during the day, day stuff. So yeah, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I kind of knew, you know, about, you know, Bradford's character and, you know, Steve's character and just, just, I knew the, the people that I was going to be uh, really interacting with. So, so yeah, I definitely had to do my research on that. <laughs> you were Benelli's first love. Yeah. Dish. Yes. And I'm like, ish. <laughs> but then you wound up in a coma. Yeah. I think you need to come back and have a child. Like that <laughs> you had been pregnant during the coma and now Spinelli has another kid. Because like, I really thought about that. I was like, okay, she wasn't in the second season. We have an opening. Right. right. And that's yeah, we, we talked about that the other day on the podcast about, we were like, whatever happened to Jolene? And I'm like, well, as far as I know, she was in a coma and- you know, I, uh, we don't, we, we're not really sure what, what, where she went, you know? Yep. Um, so yeah. So I guess the possibility is, is always there for Jolene to make an appearance or come back. But, um, but yeah, that, that's actually a really yeah. good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of black holes in storylines that yeah. they, they're going on, they're going on and then they just go yeah. to the side and yeah. Yeah, never find out they kind of take a left and you just, yeah, you'd never quite know sort of if they're going to get picked up back, you know, picked back up again, or if they're just going to die off or what. But that's the beauty of soaps, I guess, because you can have somebody dead for 20 years and all of a sudden they, they weren't really dead after all. They, they are, they are alive. They, they just had to go off and do their own thing for a while. You know? yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so you did all my children for how long? I was there for a couple years. When I got cast on the show, I was actually replacing a character. Um, I was replacing uh, Alexa Havens, who had originally, you know, come up with the role. Well, she was originally cast as the role of Babe, Babe Chandler. And um, she was leaving the show. She decided to leave the show. So they decided to recast the character. So I went on and was, I kept the role going. And then a tornado swept through Pine Valley and we had some casualties and Babe was one of the casualties in in that unfortunate event so yes she she perished or I think she perished maybe she can't maybe I came back as a ghost a couple times and then I think when they were ending the show they brought Alexa back since she originated the role and I don't think she I don't think she died it was one of those things where I'm saying like you know soaps like you think they died but she got shipped off somewhere and then kind of came back so yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah I was there for a couple I was Is there, there fun the stuff that we can say just because of soap operas you know it mean, came through she may or oh, may not yeah. die oh, yeah. Sure. yeah absolutely yeah it's always fun like I said getting those scripts and just not knowing what's going to be you know in, in, in that episode, you're like, all right, we're, we're, we're going to go for it, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So what have you done since? So well, far? um, after I got done with, um, all my children, I, I was in New York for a short time after that. Then I moved back to Los Angeles and just kind of started doing some, um, guest stars on, on TV shows, commercials, things like that. And then I met my husband um, and we got married and kind of through that process, I, I was still doing some acting, but then when I got pregnant with my son, um, I kind of at that point in my life, I, I kind of just wanted, I needed some normalcy in the sense of like a regular schedule and kind of knowing like what was going to happen next, like day to day. So I took a little break, um, after I had my son and, um, you know, did little things here and there in between, but nothing, you know, I didn't really pursue it as strongly as I'd been in the past. And then about, about three and a half years ago, we moved here to Nashville. You know, I, I was kind of back in the Southeast where it all started for me. And I still had my Southeastern agent and we, I kind of just started auditioning again and kind of slowly getting my feet wet. And then I got pregnant with my daughter. And so, so we put things on hold with that for a while, but um, anyway, now she's almost two, but, uh, over the last, probably I'd say, I guess year, 
um, I've started, I've started my career back up again. So um, just, you know, mainly doing stuff in Atlanta, just did a Hallmark movie that's airing actually in a couple days. Um, and then I'm on, I have a recurring role on a TV show called Black Lightning, which is airing on the CW. Right. And yeah, just starting to do some projects. And actually, um, the beginning of the month, I'm going to be flying to Virginia and I'm going to be doing a, a short film with uh, my my past husband that I worked with on All My Children, Jacob Young. Um, oh. Yeah, he's going to be, we're going to, we're doing a, a short a movie together and we've stayed in touch over the years. And so I'll get to reconnect with him and do this film. It's actually about an astronaut. Um, his name was John Bull and I'm so I'm playing his, I'm playing his wife in, in the movie. So we get to, um, yeah, we get to reconnect again. So it'll be, it'll be fun to do that. Oh, that's really cool. He was on General Hospital too. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he's kind of, he's kind of floated around, you know, General Hospital, all my children, both and beautiful. So, um, so yeah, so it should be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited about it. But he, he was the one that kind of, uh, he let me know about the project and uh, kind of went through the process of everything and finally um, decided that that was, you know, I was going to hop on board. So, so yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be good. Does your son know that you're an actress? Has he seen you on TV? Yes, he does. And he tells his teachers at school that, um, <laughs> oh, mom, mom had to go film for Black Lightning. And they're like, oh, okay. Or like, you know, he'll, he'll say random things like that. So when I pick him up from school or drop him off or whatever, you know, they'll, they're really sweet. They'll, they'll say things like, you know, so when is the Hallmark movie airing, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> but yeah, he's seen me on, um, we've, sh we've showed him a few things, not everything. We've showed him a few things. <laughs> And, um, he's, he's kind of at the age where he's, you know, he's interested, he's six, but I feel like he'll probably get to an age a little, little later on where he's just like, eh, whatever, you know, right now he's like, wait, mom, wait, you're yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're on TV. You're, you're just playing that part. You're, you're, you're just being an actor there. Cause there was this one movie I did where I, uh, it was actually called pandemic kind of like 20 <laughs> times worse than what's happening here. And uh -huh. so I played this woman that had been infected with this virus. And uh, anyway, the, the scene is very, um, it's, a little, it's a little gory, but um, he, he watched it. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, really bad, like frightening, but uh, he watched it and he's like, okay, he's like, yeah, that's not real. That's you playing a part. And I'm like, yes, buddy, it's not real. You know, so I've had the chance to kind of explain to him, you know, sort of, how it works and going to set. And he's actually come with me a couple times too for when I, when I film. So he gets to kind of understand sort of what, what goes into it. So that's, that's really cool. Not sure if you want him seeing Night Shift. It's like, mommy's a murderer. Oh, exactly. No, Has, he hasn't seen that. No, I wouldn't. he's not really seen mommy on any of the soap stuff. It's just been other <laughs> things. <laughs> mommy, why are you kissing that guy that's not daddy? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes, like, yeah. um, used um <laughs> yeah so yeah so so none of that but um but stuff that you know he can kind of um his little six his six-year-old brain can comprehend you know <laughs> right yeah. right no that's cute yeah. I have a seven-year-old and she's not impressed by the podcast but we had done an interview on YouTube the other day and she was like oh you're on YouTube like now I'm famous because oh, yeah. I was on YouTube, YouTube but anything like, else <laughs> YouTube is huge right and right so, yeah. <laughs> My son comes to me the other day, he's like, mom, he's like, I want my own YouTube channel so I can record myself and, you know, I can say like and subscribe. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk about that, you know? Yep. So yeah, YouTube is like everything. It's huge. So yeah. <laughs> is that all that he wants his channel to be? Is so like, there a topic or anything or just because he wants to be able to say, please like and subscribe? Well, he wants to do certain things like filming him doing you know playing with toys you know like that whole ryan ryan's world thing yeah, yeah. Um, you know like filming him uh running around the backyard and doing uh, doing tricks and stuff you know stuff like that so he <laughs> wants all of that and please like and subscribe yes. oh my gosh yeah, the whole pack <laughs> so cute yeah yeah so <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. That, is, that that's his main goal right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon's kids are older, so they're not into all of that. So. Right, right. It's <laughs> not like that. No. It is. It's a yeah. whole thing. You have to like and subscribe and oh, blah, blah, blah. There's like a whole bit to it. The whole, the whole, there's, yeah, there's a whole bit to it. So, and he's just, yeah, he's got his favorite shows he watches and yeah, all that. So he's, he comes to me one day. I'm like, oh, oh we're there. We're there. We made it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. 
don't even want to think about what's going to be around when he's a teenager though. Right. I mean, oh gosh, I'm frightened. I'm like, I'm terrified. It's, it's just, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of good stuff, but there's also stuff that's like, you know, it just scares the crap out of you. It's like, you just never know what's ahead, you know, and what you can't control, you know, there's things that you right. can't control, but then there's other things that you can't. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, and then with my daughter, you know, who's only two or almost two, she's, I, I, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Hopefully so. she's not doing it yet. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that could be part of his show though. He could show how to be a good big brother. Go. Yes. And he's been really sweet. He's been so good with her. So I think that would be something, um, he probably wouldn't want to, but you know, maybe if I suggested it and, and like doing something fun, you know, he might, mm -hmm. might be on board with it. Have to kind of be a little sly about it. <laughs> so do you like doing like the movies more or do you like doing soap operas? Um, I would say TV in general is probably more my speed because with TV, you know, you're, you're at a, you're at a set location, you know, pretty much kind of like you're going to be working between Monday and Friday, like certain set hours. And, um, you know, I think with, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. Movie, movie sets are, are awesome. And, and everybody, because you're constantly with everybody for, you know, a few months at a time. Um, it's always a special experience for sure. But I think with where I am at in my life now, you right. know, versus, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, um, I think TV, like episodic TV and, or soaps, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, you know, kind of what to expect with the, with the day-to-day -day stuff. So, right. yeah. Probably easier to have a family and. It is, I think so for sure. And I, the, the actors that are out there that are able to, to have the, have, you know, um, movie careers and, and things like that and, and travel and do that with families. Like it's, I just, I have so much respect for them because it's a lot, you know, and there's a lot that goes into it with the logistics and everything. So, um, and a lot of people, you know, especially if they have spouses that are in the business too, like they trade off, you know, so ne they're never really apart from the kids. So yeah, but it's, um, yeah, just with me having to go down to Atlanta and film with Black Lightning, like my husband and I have to figure everything out, you know, because he works. And so it's like, you you just, there's all these moving pieces. So, um, but it's nice though. It's nice to be able to kind of, it's kind of come full circle for me, I feel like being back in the Southeast and just seeing how much it's grown and kind of getting back into that side of it has been, um, it's been really cool. I knew that I wasn't done acting, but when I took the break, I was like, I just kind of need this for now. And I knew that it would, my plan was to start back up again when I felt like I was ready. So, so yeah. And the thing about acting, I think, um, that's really great is that it's, you know, there's, there's all sorts of ages needed and, you know, look on TV now and there's so many different platforms. You've got your online platforms and you've got like, it's just, it's crazy, like how many options there are. So it's nice that now I'm being like a mom age that, you know, the parts are still there and there's still stuff going on. So it's, it's, it's definitely hopeful, you know, where it's, you're not like, oh, it's all over. Like it's done. I can't, I can't do it, you know? So, so that's cool that there's still so much available. So your husband doesn't work in the industry then? He used to, he used to. Um, and actually from time to time, he kind of still does a few things here and there. He is, uh, he works for a, um, a commercial contracting company, but he's still involved with our, he's, he's still involved with our Southeastern agency. And he just, he got cast not too long ago as the Lowe's for pros guy. So he had to go to North Carolina and shoot a bunch of videos on like different tools and, you know, yep. <laughs> like all sorts of stuff. So he still does things here and there that kind of pertain to what he's doing. So yeah, so that's, it's fun because we, we got to see him online, you know, the Lowe's stuff and um, he was doing things. He actually knew what he was doing, you know, and was familiar with. So, that's <laughs> so awesome. yeah, but no, his day to day, like weekly thing is not in the industry. So yeah, but he used to, he used to, he, that's why he moved out to LA and we met out there. I never thought I'd meet, meet anybody in Los Angeles, but yeah, but you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> Now, how did you get into acting originally? Um, you up doing, well, you know, when I was when I was growing up in school, I was I was pretty shy. But it wasn't until I was in high school that my my high school uh, choir teacher 
she really helped me kind of come out of my shell and it was like a performing group. So it was like, you know, you would do like Broadway stuff. So you, you, you couldn't be shy. I mean, it was one of those things where you had to get out there and like sing and dance and act and do everything, you know? And so I think it was at that point that I realized that that was something that I wanted to try to pursue in some way. Of course, my, my realist side, not my dreamer side, my realist side was like, no, but you have to go to college and you have to, you have to get a degree in something like normal. So I ended up going off to college. I got a business degree of all things. Uh, but I knew that's not where my passion was. Like I knew the whole time I was studying it, like I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm just doing this as a backup, but I would like to still be able to try to do something creative, you know? And so after I graduated, I got involved with a local agency in Charleston where I'm from. And it was just small things, like little things here and there, just local commercials and you know, things like that, that kind of where it started. And then from there, it kind of just started to build. And like I said, Wilmington at the time had, you know, One Tree Hill and a couple of other shows. So I did what was available there. And then when, when I kind of felt like I was maxed out on that area, that's when I went to New Orleans. And New Orleans, and still is very, very big today. They they were shooting a lot of TV shows and, you know, movie, TV movies of the week and things like that. So when I was there for that six months, I did a three or four projects while I was there. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of how it all started. But like I said, a while ago, it was, a, it, it was slow for me. It was like a slow build. So when I got out to LA, it's like, you know, it's just like this big world of like, where do I even begin? You know, like, where do I, who do I go to? You know, so I'd made some connections before that and got to know some people. So when I got out there, I, uh, I just called him up and I was like, I'm here. Like, you know, can I come, can I come in for a meeting? And I wanted to try to get representation. So that's, that's, that was kind of the build up there. But, um, the, the manager that I ended up going with when I first moved to LA, like we're still, he's still technically my manager. I mean, as far as LA goes, even though I don't live yeah. there, we, I just talked to him yesterday on the phone, which is crazy. And um, he just sent me an email a couple days ago about a, a project that's actually just going to be going over Zoom. That's what that's kind of where it's all moving to. Wow. People like this pandemic, like they're they're wanting to shoot movies over Zoom, which is nuts, you know. So um, yeah, so I talked to him yesterday. So we he's still my manager after all these years, like I think fifteen years now. And um, so yeah, it's 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 just crazy to just see like you know how 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 it's all transforming you know this world of tv and and film and stuff yeah i'll be interested to see how they change to zoom because i was thinking about that earlier when you said you kind of like um got back into your career this yeah. year and i'm like yeah. of all the years i mean it, you've been successful you know it sounds like you've had yeah. a lot of things happening it's 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 crazy because i thought am i insane i mean this is like you know a lot of the shows that have started back up again, they have really strict COVID guidelines. So they test like three and four times a week and they, they literally have stations set up uh, like on set, like on site where you have to go and, you know, get swabbed and do everything. So, you know, they, they've found a way to make it happen. Um, and then on the other side of that, people that are just wanting to kind of do new projects that are just solely like on the computer, like literally just, you know, everything happening in the house. So it'll, it's, it's interesting to see how, how that's going to turn out, you know, and what, and what will come of it. But I was really happy to hear about the show because last season I was on the, the show that I'm on now and just not knowing what was going to happen, you know, and if they were going to even film again. So it's, it's, it's really hopeful to see it like, you know, that they're, they're just, you know, they're making it happen. So so yeah. they're adapting, they're plugging along, they're getting creative. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So it's, I think people still, um, are, are just wanting to, you know, and, and plus everybody's in their homes and are, a lot of people are in their homes and it's like, they still want to watch TV. And they want to say, I'm like, we can't on. keep binging. Like we need yeah. new stuff to binge. Right. So. Yeah. You know? And so it's, it's just the thought of like, okay, how many reruns can we watch? Like we want. So yeah. So the it, I was I was just really excited to hear that they were starting up production again on, on a lot of different things. And um, so, so yeah, it's crazy though. Like just to think like um, starting my career back up, you know, right. I think it was October last year. 
And then in March, like the pandemic hits and it's like, oh my gosh, like what's, <laughs> what's happening, you know? So yeah, it's, it's going along right now. So I'll, uh, I'll take it as long as it's happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the name of the Hallmark movie? It's called A Nashville Christmas Carol. And there's some, you know, um, country music stars in it. We've got, um, there's Winona Judd and Kix Brooks from Brooks and Dunn and uh, Kimberly Williams Paisley, who's married to Brad Paisley. Aww. And so, yes, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of great singing in it. And um, it's, it's kind of a take on the original Christmas Carol. But the uh, character in the movie, she, the actress's name is Jessie Schramm, but she, in the movie, uh, she kind of has to revisit her past. And so the country music stars play like the ghost of Christmas past and ghost of Christmas present and future. Nice. So, and then I play her mom in a flashback in one of the, in, when she visits her past, I play her mom. So, um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was fun though. You know, they had, they had fake snow going on in, you know, September. So that was fun. Yeah. Everything was Christmassy and, you know, Hallmark is always like just kind of a warm and cozy like feeling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it was, it was a lot of fun. I'm just hoping they bring more projects to Nashville because, you know, we did have um, the show Nashville that was here and it was successful Great for show, a long yeah. time. So, you know, it's, um, I'm hopeful that they'll start to, you know, bring some more stuff here into the city. It's a beautiful city. It really is. Yeah, it's grown. I mean, it's grown a lot. You know, there's a lot of, of people coming in. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's so much that you can do. And it's a really lively town. Not only do you have like downtown and the, the live music and all that, but you have beautiful hikes and good food. And there's just, it's, it's, there's a lot that you can do, especially, um, if you're single or if you have a family. So it's a nice mix, which is good. Yeah. So do you sing? Cause you had mentioned your choir director earlier. I do. I do sing. Um, I haven't done anything country music related while I've been here, but, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm actually on the worship team at my church and that was kind of a crazy fluke thing. I, I hadn't planned on it, but it just sort of happened. And so, um, you know, and with the musicians that are all around here in Nashville, like you don't feel quite, you're like, oh, um, I don't think I'm, I don't think that yeah. I'm part of that because <laughs> you're an aspiring, not just, just an aspiring musician, you are a musician and a singer. So, uh, but no, it's been a lot of fun just to kind of get back into that side of things. This, this whole new sort of creative stuff that's been going on in my life, you know, the last like probably year, year and a half, it's been really, really awesome. And I, I realized how much I didn't miss that, you know, once I kind of started back, started that back up again. So, so yeah, that, that part of it is happening on the, um, the worship church side. Um, but I've, I've had people and friends that, that are, they go and perform and do stuff around Broadway and stuff. So maybe we'll see, maybe that'll be something we, I, I jump into maybe, you know, once a month or something or you know, mm -hmm. when time goes on, but that would be fun because I, um, I miss sort of singing. I sang in a band for, for a few years while I was trying to get my acting career going so I could pay the bills. Okay. So I toured around and just did, you know, um, my band, we, we did the fraternity sorority circuit, you know, just the crazy, you know, when you're single, you know, you just don't have any, you don't have any obligations really. So, so yeah, I think that probably bring back a lot of memories if I actually did something like that <laughs> on Broadway, like flashbacks, like, oh God, you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll see, but just in so many amazing singers on Broadway, like you go down Broadway and you walk in any of one of those bars and you're just like, oh my gosh, the talent is just crazy. So yeah, it's, it's fun to, um, it's fun, like just to have a date night down there, you know, and just go and, and just listen to music and just have a nice fun night out. So yeah. yeah. I hope Broadway reopens. Like that's the, yeah. you're talking about it. And I'm like, there's no way. Yeah, I know. I know. And it's such a big part of Nashville, you know, when you think about it. So I think they're slowly starting to do that. I think there's a lot of places that are, that have started to open up and, and allow people to come in and stuff. I think they still might have like a certain capacity, you know, mm -hmm. limit, but, um, but yeah, it's not as crazy as it, you know, it would be. And on it, you know, before pandemic, mm -hmm. but it's still, um, they're slowly getting it back to normal, hopefully. So is there anything else that you want to talk about? You know, that's pretty much everything that's going on right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me and, uh, you know, just 
that's, that's currently what's going on in my world. So yeah. yeah. It was loved your character. Honestly, I, Oh, thanks. Thanks. It was, it was a lot of fun to play. I, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, to say that's really the only time you can do something like that. I feel like, you know, <laughs> get a lot uh, of aggression out through your character and just, Oh like yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I remember coming home. I lived with three other girls at the time when I was filming the show. I remember coming home and they'd be like, so what'd you do today? You know? <laughs> I'm like, well, I put some air on somebody's line and uh, killed them in the hospital. So, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, so it was, um, yeah, it was a good character to get some aggression out. <laughs> yeah. We'll definitely have to check out that Hallmark movie. That sounds good. We're both country fans. Yeah, so. it's, I think it's, um, no, I think it's November 21st. Okay. Oh, perfect. Carol. Yeah, yeah. So it should, it's coming up, like, in a couple days. So, um, yeah. Hallmark and um it should be it should be a fun one for sure I think all Hallmark you know any Hallmark movies especially Christmas movies are always just fun to kind of escape you know they're much needed right now oh yeah oh yeah yeah and I think they shot like 40 something new Christmas movies this year so wow. there's a whole lineup going on I think they've already started so it's definitely uh, it's definitely needed and um yeah just kind of take you away from from anything for a while you know when you, when you watch it yeah this was so much fun. Thank you so much for your time and glad yeah. we were able to coordinate schedules. And Yes. Thank you again. I so appreciate it. And yeah. Um, yeah, you guys take care and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. You too. Yes. You too. And yeah. come up good actually. rest of the holiday and years and hopefully yeah. we'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Amanda. Okay. Bye. Bye. She is so sweet. She was so sweet. So you heard her mention that she's in a Hallmark movie, and we actually recorded this on November 19th, so we're releasing it after the 21st, so it's probably already out there. Well, it should already be out there. Because right, she said the 21st, so. Yeah, so definitely check out the Nashville Christmas Carol. I'm excited for it. That sounds great. Yes. Well, I was hoping that she was going to say, yeah, I sing with all of them, and I'd be like, that's awesome! I totally thought that's where she was going to go, and then she didn't, and then I was sad. Could so. you imagine just, oh, I'm just going to go sing with Winona Judd. I'm just going to go sing with Kix Brooks. I'm going to sing with Kimberly Williams Paisley. I couldn't imagine that because I can't sing with anyone because I can't sing. She so. can. I know she can. I'm jealous. I just really like learning more about how these people got onto the show how like and what they're doing. I, I cannot wrap my head around a movie made on Zoom. No. I can't wait to find out more about that because right. I don't even know how you'd begin to stage that unless it's all green screen or what but i i don't know but someone's know. out obviously out there right now thinking about how they can make this work it's i mean i'll watch it absolutely <laughs> i'll watch it but i don't totally. know how it's gonna work i mean we have feature films being made on iphones now so but no it was just it was i really do like nashville it's mm -hmm. really it's really nice down there so we'll need to take a trip once this is all over yes I don't know what else to say. It's I don't either because I feel like we had a really good conversation. I don't right. have a lot to wrap up because exactly. we kind of told her. Right. It was all in there. <laughs> yeah. So join us on Monday as we re-keep, re -keep, no. recap this week's shows. Have a good weekend. And we'll meet you with a peer. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.